Hello, it's Jeanette with Geo Amazing Paper Crafts. Welcome to my craft closet. Today, I'm going to attempt to make a stamp positioner. Yep, a do-it-yourself stamp positioner. Now, there's some stamp positioners on the um, on the market today. One of them is my, you know, the Fiskars with the little sponges here. And I, and I did uh, make an attempt to try to make one, but <clears throat> Fiskars has a really, really thin plastic and it wobbles all over the place. And I still needed to make something that would um, stabilize it so that every stamp, when I was doing multiple cards, everything would be exactly in the same spot. So I'm going to be using the Stampin' Up Block F, which measures of uh, four and seven eighths by six inches so that's this block right here it's the real thick acrylic block i love this thing anyway and then you're going to need some fast fuse you're also going to need some uh snail adhesive some scissors your bone folder your paper snips and what you're also going to need is a little makeup sponge mm -hmm. um, this is just some uh, adhesive foam board uh, just a little really thin piece here and now you you know you get these all the time in, in the big sheets because Stampin' Up always includes some kind of uh, piece of chipboard. Well, this is going to be our base here. So I have cut this down to uh, measure eight inches by seven inches. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to take your Stampin' trimmer. Now you don't want to do this on your Simply Scoreboard because it's just uh, uh, it'll be easier for you to position this um, and and make your scores using this. Uh, uh, stampin trimmer so I'm just going to use my score blade and I'm going to score one inch all the way around okay now when you try to do it on your uh, on your simply score it's really really hard to keep this on track because this uh, chipboard is so thick and it's kind of hard using even that little embossing tool. Okay, now, um, after you do that, then you're going to take and you're going to uh, go two inches uh, scoring, but only to that first score line here. So take your score and uh, your scoring tool and just score there. Now that's just a mark because you're going to be cutting there. Okay, go all the way around and do that. doesn't have to be so perfect even if you've gone over the line it's fine it's just basically a mark because you will be cutting there <clears throat> now flip it over to do the other sides I know sounds kind of weird but like I say this is just a little mark to give you to as a cutting guide. One more. Okay. I you know. I think this is really, really strange. Okay. I think we are pretty much done, except now you're going to want to cut. two inches up here stop and lift it up go that two inches here oh actually it's that two inch mark from here but it's actually a one inch mark from here and you want to cut that okay and you go go around and just cut that line that second line that you made okay and you'll see why you you're going to do it that way all right and don't worry too much if you've gone a little over it's okay <clears throat> I like that there's this little one inch measurement on here and then flip it over and do the same thing you want to cut that two inch line mark all the way to one inch here okay 
turn it round. Oop, there it goes. Turn it round. Turn it round. And turn it. Come on. Okay, so now you got all these little flaps here. You want to cut those flaps off. So line up that score line here and go to your two inch mark on this one here and score all the way or cut all the way down to the six inch mark that's here. Okay, and you want to cut that off. And just try to be as careful as you can. Um, I'm not that neat. So I'm going to go from on uh, this one, I'm going to go from the two inch to the five inch and cut that off. Okay. Now, if you want to do this with your scissors, that's fine. Um, it's a little, it's a little hard for me to do, to do it with my scissors or it was. Six. Okay. Look like a great big fat eye when you're done with it. Letter I, that is. Okay, there it is. Now, now you want to fold your score lines. Okay, you can take, I'm putting this away now. Um, take your, now don't throw these away. You're going to need these as spacers, okay? And you'll see what I mean when we get to that point. Um, with your, um, with your bone folder, I guess you could do it. You don't really have to. It's because it's kind of tough to do this part here. All right. Now it's going to seem like it's cracking, but that's okay. Now um, I cut it. Let's see which way. I guess this is going to be okay. I have to cut this here. And I'll just reinforce that. Now you don't want to put this in in here like that. You will want to put this so you can make a smooth corner here, and this on the outside. And you'll be using fuse to do that. But let me go and cut up all these lines here. Okay, turning around, cutting up like that. Okay, so we're putting fuse right here on this one. The fuse, is, fuse or sticky strip will work just fine. But fuse is like really, really strong. Okay. And you're going to make your, your little corner there. Okay. Um, so we'll just go around and see how we're doing this. Yep, like that. These right here. I get myself confused. Let me put fuse on all of these. See, this is going to go like that. So I put fuse here. I know. Now my fuse is acting up. It always does because I press too hard. Uh, and it, it helps when you don't try to use this thing upside down. Okay. And right here. Very good. Now, make our little corners here. Now, you don't really need all four corners. In fact, I'm going to cut one of these corners off. This one here. You know, you think I'm nuts. I just put fuse on it. <laughs> you don't need all four corners. Let's just go with three. Three corners. You're going to see why. You only need three. All right, here goes. Now, this is going to fit right in here because you measured it right. Now, this is going to take this the, the place of, uh, of, of like your, um, uh, your piercing mat when you, when you stamp. This works really good. So, let's put this in here and see how it fits. If it's a little bit loose, this is where you're going to use your little spacers here. Fold them in half. Okay. And, and put some fuse on them. Come 
Bear with me here. And that's going to work as a spacer here. Because you don't want a real tight, tight fit. But you also don't want it to um, to be too loose either. So um, two spacers will probably work just fine. Okay, bet you're wondering where that makeup sponge is come coming in. <laughs> okay, let's position this. Perfect. This is going to be perfect. Okay, I don't need a spacer on that end over there. Although I could probably trim a little bit off of that pad, but that's okay. We'll do that later because I haven't stuck that down. Now, makeup sponge. Hmm, what are we doing with a makeup sponge? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to cut it into quarters. Okay, I'm using these craft scissors to work beautifully on here. Okay. And I'm going to take my snail adhesive. Now you want to probably use an adhesive that's not so sticky. Uh, snail adhesive works really good with this. And I'm going to place it in this corner right here with the snail adhesive on it. Now this is just for positioning. And then I'm going to put my block in there. Okay, and you're going to do that for all four corners. Okay, if you try to, if you... If you try to uh, position them, uh, you know, without putting them in the corner, you might have a little bit of a hard time. I found that this way is a little easier for me. That way I know it's perfectly in the corner. And we use that other corner. Okay. Here. Now the reason why you want to use snail instead of a really strong adhesive is because these are going to pull off. You're not going to always want these on here. So they'll pull off a lot easier um, if you use the snail adhesive. And if you, if you use anything stronger, it's, you're going to have a hard time pulling these little spongy things off. Now see, you've got yourself a nice stamp positioner. Isn't that wonderful? No, just um, the reason I, I made myself one of these is because it um, it's really, really difficult to position your, your stamp. So let's say you want to do a card. Now I have this card right here that um, I, I already stamped, you know, my painted petals. Let me grab my painted petals over here so I can show you how um, it's nice to be able to uh, position every card. Okay. Let's line this up here. All right. That will go there. That will go there. Now you're going to pick up your... See? And then you'll ink it. Let's see what color we're going to ink it in yellow. Okay. Because that was the first one on top. All right. Now I want to make several yellows. Or even if I want to switch colors, now I've got my positioner. My there it is. Now, of course, I didn't really position it right, so that means that every single card that I do is going to be wrong. But you get the picture. You want to make sure you position it right the first time. And then every stamp is going to be right. So you can do several cards at a time. Just put it in the corner there. Stampin'. See? So now you can make several and then you can put your little uh, wording there after you take this off. Your little greeting. Let's see. Don't we have like a thank you greeting with this wonderful painted petals? Oh, here it is. Thank you. Love this. Now we'll put this back in. We're going to have a thank you here. That's where you want your thank you. They're going to all work there. in the same spot. Okay, press down, grab your your cling, make sure this is positioned right. Okay, now we're gonna just add a little ink to this. Now be careful not to get it on your little spongy feet <clears throat> because when you do, then you'll have to wipe it off, otherwise it'll 
transfer onto your card. And even if you get some on here, watch this. This is so cool. That's not going to transfer over because I'm not pressing hard enough. See? See, you got that little bit of ink on there? What? Oh, I love this thing. Now, <clears throat> if you have a husband that will um, uh, take this idea a step further, which is what my husband did, <clears throat> what he's done is he's built me a little block like this, okay? And this is that uh, foam board, but underneath this block is a little magnet, uh, is a little piece of um, sheet metal. A steel so that now when I go and I do my stamping here um, I can actually hold the stamp I mean the, the card down with a magnet before I pick it up and let me ink it up again ah. gotta be really careful not to get it on the feet here let me move this over here see this Boom. There's my thank you. And it'll be in the same spot. I pressed a little too hard on that. Every time I, I ink it up, it'll be in the same spot. Isn't this wonderful? My husband is wonderful. He's my Mr. Awesome. Okay. No, you got to be careful. Anyway, just my little... But this is just for demonstration purposes. You want to make sure that you're not pressing too hard. See how I, I had some ink right there that I didn't see? Kind of want to always be careful with these cling stamps. So this is just a, a really fun uh, way that you can uh, position your your uh, your cards and your, your stamps so that you got repeated stamps over and over again. And um, I just absolutely love this thing. I still use my the, one, the first one I made. And like I say, you only really need three. It kind of is handy to have this spot open here. Uh, that's why I cut that part off. You could actually even cut this part off and just use the two but I find that this has been helpful for me too so I hope you uh, will try this you know you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on a stamp positioner if you've got some cardboard and you've got um, you know hey that's pretty much all you need except these little you know makeup sponges which I just purchased these little makeup sponges um, at uh, Walmart or you can go to the Dollar General store uh, very very inexpensive so I hope that you try it and uh, let me know how you do okay uh, once again this is Jeanette with Geo Amazing Paper Crafts you make it a great day bye bye <music>